everything looks fine from everything here. looks fine okay yes everything looks fine by the way i'm a frequent reader of prospect magazine i love the concept i love the concept of um, long reading the guardian that you have oh, good good fantastic fantastic i'm glad i'm glad you're oh, you ha you have readers in serbia too good excellent uh, I promise that this won't take uh, much of your time, and it won't. Uh, Daniel Esberg died, and for example, if you meet some young journalist passionate about this job, uh, what would you tell him or her who was Daniel Ellsberg and why is he, why he is so important for our job? Well, Daniel Ellsberg was, if you like, the Edward Snowden or the Julian Assange of his time. He was the grandfather of um, all modern whistleblowers. And what he did was to act out of conscience. He was uh, a Pentagon contractor. And in uh, the early 1970s, he became very uncomfortable that the material that he was working on, which was about the history of the Vietnam War, was portraying a, a different picture from the one that the American public was being fed. Now, the Vietnam War was at its height then. People were going off to die. Uh, and it was shocking uh, to read that the truth about the war had been um, had been uh, fed to them by the government. But also, without, uh, without Ben Bradley, for example, and journalist in Washington Post and uh, the publishers at the time, whistleblowers are not that much successful. So Daniel Ellsberg is a brave man, without any doubt. But they were brave too at the time. Yeah, it, well, the, the story went to both the Washington Post and the New York Times. Uh, and you had two very brave editors who uh, decided that they would publish this. Uh, and within uh, a very short period of time, the American government, led by Richard Nixon, uh, injuncted them. So they, they went to court to stop them from publishing. And the case very quickly went to the Supreme Court. Uh, and in a rather marvelous uh, series of, of, of judgments, 6-3, the court was split. Um, the court uh, said this was exactly what the press should be doing. Uh, and uh, and lifted the injunction. Um, and it's been now memorialized in film. Um, and Ellsberg is committed, considered a, a, a hero. But at the time, Nixon was out for his guts. He, he called him a traitor, and he was trying to prosecute him under the Espionage Act. Uh, have you met him? Did you have a chance to meet Daniel Ellsberg? I have met him. I, I met him in Sweden, and uh, we spent a couple of days uh, in each other's company with, with other people. Uh, and he was um, uh, gentle, uh, but very tough. Um, and um, I, I've heard him say since that his only mistake as a whistleblower was not to blow the whistle earlier, because uh, when he, for all the time that he wasn't blowing the whistle, the lies went on and people went on dying. You've mentioned already Edward Snowden and Julian Assange. We can compare them as whistleblowers. Of course, the era is completely different. But, uh, for example, Edward Snowden and Daniel Asberg both worked in, so to say, security apparatus of their countries. Uh, what are the similarities and is there some difference between, for example, Edward Snowden and his approach and uh, Daniel Asberg's? Well, I think he's most similar to Edward Snowden. Both, both <clears throat> had the material and they handed it to other journalists to publish and left them to make their own choices about what they considered significant. Um, I, all, all three are the same in, to this extent, that um, uh, there's no, no question that Snowden would be prosecuted on the uh, Espionage Act if the Americans could get their hand on him. They want to do the same with Julian Assange. Uh, and... Uh, it comes down to the question of who is the determinant of the national interest. Now, a conventional argument says that, well, it's the government of the day that is elected and they should be the determinant. But um, uh, we know now that, that Richard Nixon was a crook. Uh, and um, in fact, in trying to prosecute uh, Ellsberg, he actually broke into his psychiatrist's room, tapped his phone, tried to get dirt on Ellsberg, which is why the charges were eventually thrown out. 
But what I think national security laws need to have is the ability of people to explain their motive, to explain what the public interest is. And then I think it's for a jury to decide uh, whether uh, whether or not that's the case. And I know Edward Snowden would have returned uh, to face the music in America if he felt that he, he would have the chance to um, uh, explain what the public interest in what he did was. Do you think that that will happen someday, that uh, Edward Snowden will return to his country in some circumstances in our lifetime, his lifetime? I think it's unlikely. Um, I mean, I, I can't imagine he's having much fun in Russia at the moment. It's probably the last place on earth he wants to be. Um, but it's still preferable to being locked up in a maximum security prison for uh, 20 or 30 years. He has a young family. Uh, and I, I think he thinks if he could explain what the public interest was or why he did what he did, he would have a fair ch a chance of persuading a jury. There was a case in, in England in 1985, uh, another civil servant called Clive Ponting, uh, who was tried for revealing some secrets about the Falklands War. And the judge instructed the jury to find him guilty and the jury refused. And I think these kind of cases spook politicians. They think, actually, we don't, we don't ask juries uh, because they may not agree with us. Uh, on the other hand, Julian Assange is in mm. prison in United Kingdom, and he recently lost uh, so, some appeal in his stage against, uh, in his case, against extradition to United States. Do you believe that eventually he will be extradited to US or not? I'm beginning to doubt that he will. Um, uh, I, I don't think this is a particularly um, a, a case that Joe Biden is particularly interested in. It, whether this case was launched uh, under Donald Trump, even though the prosecutor's office is um, supposed to be independent. But I think, from what I know, the 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 new American um, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has uh, made representations, and it seems to me that. Uh, whatever you think of Assange and whatever you think of what he did, he's now been in prison without trial for four or five years. Uh, and before that, he was uh, in, in hiding, as it were. Uh, I can't see what he's done that is so serious uh, that it merits this kind of treatment, given that Chelsea Manning was um, given, uh, uh, was um, he wasn't pardoned by by um, President Obama, but he, uh, her sentence was commuted. So it seems to me the American state uh, is trying to make an example of Julian Assange rather than really um, find a fit punishment for him. And uh, last question, as uh, editor-in-chief in Guardian, during not only the digital transformation of the papers, but, but also all of these scandals that... Uh, that shook the world. Um, I've listened basically everything that the, that uh, there is on on YouTube uh, about about that. But I have one simple question: Were you afraid, you personally, at any point during, uh, let's say, Snowden Snowden affair? I, I wasn't afraid. No, um, I mean, I sometimes got par paranoid that. Um... Uh, people would be uh, trying to listen to in uh, our communications, probably, probably, probably with some reason. Uh, and I think this is what governments fail to understand. That um, I thought the Snowden story was a very important one, and history, I think, has confirmed that uh, these were stories that the world deserved to know about. And I knew that I was risking um, uh, prosecution. Um, but it wouldn't have stopped me. Um, uh, you know, I, 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 I was aware that I could be uh, prosecuted both in the UK and in the US. But I think journalists who act out of conviction and out of conscience are not going to be easily stopped by the threat of jail sentences, as we've seen with you know far more um, severe circumstances around the world. Would you open Prospect magazine for such an investigation journalism project? I know that the the emphasis is on analysis, of course, but if something lays in your doorstep, something like that, would you open your 
prospect magazine for these kind of investigations. Yes, of course. Uh, if there's any whistle whistleblowers out there um, watching, um, uh, you know where to find me. Mr. Arbiter, I enjoyed your book. I'm, I'm yeah, it's nice, and, nice promotion. Thank you. And uh, I'm enjoying your magazine uh, on a daily basis. And thank you very much for your time. It was a great pleasure for me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Ciao. Fantastic. Great questions. <laughs> I like that you like it. <laughs> it was and, great. Okay. Th thank you for for uh, allowing me this on such su such short notice, but. He died, right. he died just, today, um, and uh, there Ben Bradley is dead. So you are the only one. I'm, I'm the only one who can do it. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I think Max Rosenthal, who did the, who was the new editor of the New York Times, is still alive. Amazingly, I think he he must be well into his nineties by now. But um, uh, anyway, uh, you you'll, you'll have to make do with me. Yes, of course. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Right. It was a great pleasure. Bye. Have a pleasant evening. Bye bye.